At Tanagro when the walls fell, this is Dan Owings coming at you another time for Lower Road Radio with my co-host as always, Jason. Yeah. Can on you the, see that? On the other side of the room. No, the light's in the oh, way. Shoot. Can you put it on the other side of the uh, thing? Wait, hold on. I just reset. Uh, Jason is here. Can you my see My co-host that? as always. Yeah, I can see that. He's on the other side of the room. I decided to mix things up, and everyone <laughs> thinks it's a good idea. We're all on the no. same page. No. Everybody likes it. I came in, I sat down here, and I thought, you know what? Let's just see what it, and the Ray Grogan seat. It's the Ray Grogan Memorial. Not that he's dead, but <laughs> <laughs> the Ray Grogan Memorial seat. You get a little plaque form right yeah, there. Yeah, a little plaque. You know, in memory reserved of, for in memory of Ray Grogan, oh, who's still very alive. <laughs> <laughs> but we just episodes one thirty six yeah, and but we just like to remember him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> rest in peace. One day when yeah, he does yeah, yeah, die, yeah. you know, because we're all gonna die. Everybody dies, even Ray. Yeah, Jesse is here doing what he does. Yep. Mustache looking good. Yep, it's uh, really coming along. And Preston is not here. He uh, he's got other things to take care of. Stella's on the ones and zeros. Jason, I um, I fixed a lawnmower today. You don't have a yard. Well, okay. Here's the and thing. you don't know how to fix things. Well, but both of those <laughs> things strikes one and two right yeah. there, but, but not three. Okay, <laughs> all right. I still Swing can make contact and a miss. here. Okay. So you, you first fouled, of all, I don't t- have fouled, a yard. You foul tipped a couple. You're right. I I can foul tip a couple. Um, I don't have a yard, but um, in his infinite wisdom, the pastor of the church that I go to thought that I should mow, even though he doesn't really. He, I don't you should mow your yard, or you that should, I should mow the church. What? He yes, and I'm like, what are you doing? What am I paying you for? He's just and he thought that I should be the one that mows. He's it. in there drinking coffee and like reading the Bible. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely drinking coffee. But <laughs> he probably doesn't. I don't know what he does or what he doesn't do. To be honest with you, so I don't know. I get a lot of stupid videos from him at different times yeah. and things. So I don't know what he's doing. But either way, he thought that I should. He's know. texting Joe Junior all day. Yeah, I know <laughs> See, like this guy. I ignore our pastor's phone calls and texts As for that should, reason specifically. Honestly, yeah. you should just text back like, "Get to work." Yeah, you know. But do um, something. <laughs> just do something. <laughs> so he thought, but you know, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna mow it because this church is not about you, guy. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna be here long before you're do the right long thing. after you're gone. Yeah. We're gonna get rid of that guy. We're gonna bring in somebody else. <laughs> anyway, so do the uh, first mower, the string the spring, you know, pull the thing, and it's nothing. I oh, yeah. got nothing. Yeah. So I go to YouTube as you do, learned how to take it apart, clean out the carburetor, put it back together, start it up, boom. It was great. It was yeah. wonderful. I, I really fixed something. But now YouTube thinks I'm a small <laughs> engine mechanic because I literally watched one video. I didn't even scroll. I was like, I clicked, you know, I don't know, lawn push lawnmower won't start. Watched the first video yeah. for four minutes until eh, I got the I got the hang of it. Yeah. That's all I did. And now I am just getting just barraged with uh, small, engine, small repair. engine repair videos. So I think I must open up a side business, you know, <laughs> multiple streams of income. When did you search for this? Today. Okay. I got the strangest. This is not a joke or I don't know. This lady, her name's Lizzie on Twitter. She sent me a message today, said, do you know anything about mechanics? Mm. So I don't know. Friend of the show? Like recently, okay. I don't know how much she watches. Well, I'm a, I'm a mechanic now. Well, I'll have to tell her you're the guy. If she needs a push lawnmower. <laughs> Troy uh, Bell. A, a, a Troy <laughs> Bell Briggs and Stratton engine push lawnmower. <laughs> uh, taken apart and the carburetor cleaned. Yeah. I'm the guy. I could do it today, right now, if I needed to. So anyway, so that's how I'm doing today. But we didn't come here to talk about lawnmowers. No. We, we came here to talk about archaeology well hold on i have a question real quick sure which this just reminded me did you get any ads on your phone for summer's eve no No, i didn't so apparently they're not spying on us i know i was kind of looking forward to it i just don't know if summer's eve is that interested in you know you don't think they're listening in i think they assume that if you want their product you're going to search them out (laughs) (laughs) that's what i think you but, think it's a waste of money to send me advertising for mm-hmm. it, is what you're you saying. You never watched that skit that I sent you, did you? The ESPN? Yeah, I probably oh, did. No, you didn't. You didn't. You I think I did. Watch it. I'll send him an anything. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. I'm pretty sure I watched it. But we came here to talk, talk about 
talk about archaeology. I'm not used to being in this uh, seat, so I'm thrown off by just uh, just a little bit. Yeah, I don't like it. Whoever suggested it, bad idea. <laughs> I told you that from but, the very beginning. I know, but it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like it was going to be fun. No. Variety is the spice of life. That's how I live my life. Well, I wrote this down. Yeah. Secrets are a way to keep a marriage fresh. <laughs> fresh? <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my little okay. bit of advice Just for the week. pack that away. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk about archaeology. Uh, Specifically, I, the Joe Rogan variety. Yes. So I am not particularly educated in archaeology. Hmm. I'm really? not particularly interested in it, to huh. be honest with you. Yeah. It's never been an interest of mine. Every once in a while you come across an article that says, yeah, hey, they found Noah's Ark again or something. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, well, read this thing. And you find out, nah, I don't think you did. <laughs> um, but uh, but Joe Rogan, uh, a four-hour... Four and a half. Four and a half hour Jeez. episode of Joe Rogan popped up on my thing. I was like, what is this? And I saw it was Graham Hancock, yeah, who I know you like. I love. He's Graham the Hancock. guy that did yeah. the Netflix documentary. Yeah, what, what's it called? I think it's called like um, Archaeology. <sighs> I thought it was like ancient archaeology. Ancient archaeology. Yeah, something like it's that. It's about an ancient civilization. So what his basic claim is? Yeah, lay out. You you're the you're the Graham Hancock expert. I've watched a lot of Graham Hancock. Okay, so his basic. Uh, bit or his basic line, <laughs> bit. bit. It's not a bit. It's a comedy yeah, bit. Okay. Now his basic deal. I don't know how to say it. I'm not good with words. Sure. So I use the best words I know. <laughs> uh huh. And sometimes my vocabulary is not as robust. <laughs> well, I say lot words when little do good. <laughs> or whatever the thing is. Double plus. Um, Graham Hancock. What's Graham his Hancock, deal? What's his deal? Here's his deal. Mm-hmm. He believes that modern day archaeology is brainwashed mm. to reproduce the same results over and over, mm. which is what we look at as the modern pace of man. So they're not that, open to new ideas. Right. So basically, 14,000 years ago, Whoa. according to mar- modern archaeology, okay. about 14,000 years ago is when um, civilizations started to launch. Post so some sort of cataclysmic event. Post some sort of classic cataclysmic event mm-hmm. and so and, and everybody agrees it's some type of worldwide flood something happened something happened it was really mm-hmm. bad so he believes okay that all of that is true mm-hmm. except prior to that worldwide flood mm-hmm. or cataclysm or whatever it is um, that there was another civilization that was modern that was prosperous that had technology and all this other stuff mm-hmm. and everybody else Literally everybody else says that that's absurd. Mm-hmm. At best, prior to that, would have been hunter and gatherers at most. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he's made multiple claims mm-hmm. that there is a civilization that existed. Yeah. And he's trying to show you mm-hmm. through evidence, you know, archaeology evidence mm-hmm. that he's right. So and does that he, make sense? Sure, as much sense as it could. So he's been on Joe Rogan before. Multiple times. Joe's a big fan. Yeah. Joe likes to talk to him. I think Joe Rogan said Graham Hancock might have been his first real guest outside yes. of like his friends and comedians. Mm-hmm. Like his first real, real and guest. And Joe is into this ancient civilization stuff. He's interested. I think Joe is a curious person. He's curious. And I mm-hmm. think he would find any topic curious. Mm-hmm. I, I, he's intrigued by things. Yeah. Intriguing minds want to know. Yeah. And he's one of the most I think intrigued. So. I, this might sound stupid, but I think it's true. I think he's the modern day Art Bell. I think he's well. I think now, he's he, more than that. Oh, for sure. But what mm-hmm. a modern day take on it, because he does a lot of these interviews and talks with people that are on the fringe. Sure, and that's Art Bell was all fringe. Right. Um, Joe Rogan's a little bit more mainstream, but um, he's not afraid to talk to people with weird ideas, and he wants to hear him out. Yeah. So, um, so Joe likes the guy, and so, um, but this guy is enemy number one of yeah. th- of big archaeology, whatever that is. Okay, so the, apparently there is an academic world of archaeology, and these guys all kind of agree with one another, and they get together with their elbow patches and Indiana Jones hats, and they talk about how Graham Hancock is a loon and he's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, well, Graham Hancock is also a big believer in the DMT and psychedelics mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So okay. uh, that's also a knock against him. Mm-hmm. 
I, I don't see that as a knock. Okay. But, um, so but that's part of the criticism. That's part of the criticism. Well, they didn't bring that up in the episode that I remember. No. Okay. So, um, so Joe, one of the things that I learned from this episode is that Joe Rogan, now I've always kind of thought this, but now I definitely think it, Joe needs to, every single time there's a presidential election, have yes. both people on and yes. he needs to moderate it. He yes. was very good. Very I thought. good. I thought he was very even handed, even though you could tell he was a Graham Hancock guy. He challenged Graham. If on Graham some said stuff. Yeah. a couple things yeah. or was seeing things that he wasn't seeing, he would be like, I don't know, man. I don't know. So even though he was a Graham Hancock guy, I felt like he was very even handed. Yeah. Flint. Well, yeah. So the other thing is, like on a presidential debate, mm-hmm. what makes Trump so good in those situations is there's a crowd. Yeah. And he's playing to the crowd. He makes right. people laugh. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I remember the big one was Megyn Kelly said, um, Mr. Trump, you've called women fat and ugly or whatever. <laughs> he goes, mm-hmm. only Rosie McDonald, yeah. you know? And um, that was a funny line. And the crowd laughs. Right. You know? Um, he can't do that in a Joe Rogan no. format. No, and Joe so, might laugh at him. Joe might laugh, but I mm-hmm. think it comes across as smug. Sure. So in a room with three people, that mm-hmm. that should be it. No more. Right. Well, yeah. Jamie his like tech guy. Yeah. But it should be Joe Rogan, Joe Biden, okay. Trump, and honestly Kennedy. Yeah. I'd put all three of them together. So I'm going to say we're about ready to talk about this. Um, now you still don't care about archaeology. No, and I'm going into this conversation completely blind. I have no you know dog nothing. in the fight. Yeah. Whatsoever. Yeah. I want to. I want to learn. I'm here to learn. I'm like yeah. Joe, um, <laughs> without the pot <laughs> and, and the, the money muscles and the muscles <laughs> and this is the general success and the self confidence. But other than those things, Joe and I are very similar. What we, about your comedic yeah. talent? I I could I I you know I I feel like put in a different environment I could make it work. But we have the same haircut, so we got that going <laughs> for us. That's true. Anyway, anyway, I'm going into this completely blind. I have no dog in the fight, and I'm just interested. Okay, let's see what happens, okay? So I got a lot of thoughts. So if you would like to, as you're listening to this episode, maybe you want to stop listening to this episode and go listen to four and a half hours <laughs> of Joe Rogan talking to these two archaeologists. And, and maybe that'll be more entertaining to you. Or maybe you could just listen to us talk about it and then go back or whatever, or shut it off. It's a free country. You do can what do you want. You, why are you even listening to us? Why do you... <laughs> what's your deal? Okay, so let me just say, first of all, Flint Dibble yeah. was not ready for this. No. Here's he he was ready to talk about archaeology. He was not ready for a debate. Well, the whole so, show was a debate. I know, but yeah. he was not he did not understand what the deal was. He's not a debater. Graham knew what the deal was. Yeah. Okay, Graham coming in, he he knew that this was about this wasn't necessarily about the facts. <laughs> this this was an emotional Graham was worked up. Graham was worked up. Yeah. And I honestly I don't blame him. Yeah. For what he was worked up about. Okay. So 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 Flint was definitely not ready. Graham is like one of the things that Graham was so Graham is technically illiterate, obviously. Yeah. Because he was like they both had their um, computers laptops there and he was like um, uh, can I put my thing up on the TV? And and Jamie yeah. was like, you're not hooked in. And he was like, well, how do I get it up there? And Jamie's like, you could just send it to me. And and he was like, well, how do I do that? Yeah. He's like, well, you can airdrop it to me. And he's like, what's airdrop? And I was like, <laughs> oh gosh, this guy. Yeah. So, and he kept on, and he kept on being like, well, I'm 73 years old. I'm, he goes, I'm using old tech. And one of my favorite parts of the episode. You're talking the other guy. He's yeah, not 73. No, Graham. No, yeah. But, yeah, Graham yeah. said I'm 73. He's like, oh, I'm using old tech and I don't know what I'm doing. And he says, and he says that. He goes, oh, I'm sorry about this. This is old tech is what yeah. he says. And, um. And Joe goes, you you have a MacBook, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was I great. <laughs> I thought that was great. So um, uh, another thought too, Flint, you're a little too proud of your dad, don't you think? Yeah. My dad was in archaeology. I mean, he was talking about this guy's dad was an archaeologist, and he wanted us to know. He didn't get thirty seconds into his spiel without talking about his dad. When my dad surveyed the you know cliffs of you know the the yeah. whatever you know he he developed this and he was like come on man You're like stop talking about your dad we get it your dad yeah. was an archaeologist you're proud of him it was it was which bad. also explains why he's brainwashed because he grew up believing right, exactly. the stuff that his dad exactly yeah. exactly he also so 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 Flint. His problem, he's got a tone problem. Yeah. So Flint... He's also got an image problem. He had that hat on and those an, headphones like behind his head. Yeah. And his shoulders looks like it, like he's sitting up like this and he keeps on turning. You immediately don't want to like him. No. But 
we could get over that. Yeah. If he didn't show up immediately talking down to everyone. Yeah. His he was like in Joe, I thought was great, and in Graham, I thought was pretty um nice to let him open up. The guy opens up with ten minutes about talking about archaeology, and this is how we do it. And he was talking down to Joe, who's more successful than him, yeah, yeah. and he's a really smart guy. And this other guy who has spent, even though he's not in the community, has spent his whole life in archaeology. Yeah. He was talking down to them the entire time. Yeah. And it was like, it immediately made you go, like, what's this guy's deal? Yeah. He kept on he kept on saying things like, okay, right, right, okay, so right. And yeah, he would do this thing where he right. chuckled as a dismissive. Oh, listen, that the laugh, laughing yeah. needed to stop. Yeah. He so here's the it's like I went into it, like I said, I bet you completely open minded. I bet you he lives in a loft. He might live in a loft. <laughs> He's the type. He's the type. So um so he he was extremely dismissive in a way that I don't think was helpful. Yeah. You got to understand you're on Joe Rogan's podcast. Right. Joe has had Graham on multiple times. Right. 90% of the people that are listening to you are already on Graham's side. You come in talking down to Graham and talking down to Joe and talking down to all of us yeah. with this laughing, dismissive. <laughs> if you were an archaeologist, then you would understand, but how can I explain it to you? You know, like it was really obnoxious. Um, all right, so I felt I felt like the biggest blow that Graham got on him was the fact that this guy is calling Graham a racist. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So we went from archaeology to racist. And I looked up Flint's X profile, yeah. and this is something that he posted. He said in his new Netflix documentary, um, and he quotes documentary yeah. by the way, um, Ancient Apocalypse. Graham Hancock has declared war on archaeologists. His rhetoric sows distrust in experts, and Atlantis conspiracy theories promote white supremacy. <laughs> so so he's, he's saying Atlanteans are white, So here's, is what he's trying to say, right? Yeah, honestly, which is hilarious. Well, so first like, of all, how would anybody know? I know. You would know we, we've not found Atlantis. Mm-hmm. There's no evidence. There's no nothing to dig up. He's the more racist one, yes. by the way. Yeah. Because he talks down to... About these indigenous people, he talks down to them, yeah. you know. Um, but um, but f- one thing I know about any kind of intellectual debate, the moment you start calling the other person racist and a white supremacist, it's because you don't want to actually have a conversation. Right. And like that tells me everything that I need to know about Well, you. and that guy was trying to get that documentary yeah. to be instead of like, um, like a science category, mm-hmm. but a science fiction category. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's made up. Right. That's what he was trying to do. Right. So, and that's where they approached it's Netflix like, and try to do all yeah, of this. What, like, do you, what are you what doing? Do you care? What do you care? What do you care? It, it makes you look small. And desperate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you are the authority, why do you, why do you care about Graham? Gra- right. If Graham Hancock is an absolute loon, right. let him say whatever he's wanted. What, what, you, if you're the expert, be the expert. Well, this goes back to the free speech free speech stuff with everything that's happened over the last four or five years. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Pick yeah. like hydro, mm-hmm. um, was it hydrochloroquine? Yeah. Whatever that's the, it. You nailed it. Yeah. Hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, ivermectin, you know, all these things yeah. that people would talk about and mm-hmm. immediately get shut down. Yeah. You can tell this guy is woke. His Twitter profile says my pronouns are he, him. Like, oh. you know, like this, the, this is That's an academic. He's living the in the academic flat guy. World. Yeah, I ref- I'm already. I'm already programmed. I, I thought maybe we could name this episode just to kind of see if we can. I don't know. Flint Dibble is a race baiting pseudo intellectual weenie. <laughs> How do you like that? Gonna, okay. I mean, it's gonna be hard to fit on a little thumb, <laughs> thumbnail, but I'll, Honestly, I'll squeeze it on there. The guy. The guy is, and I hate the phrase. And he said this multiple times. He would say, da, 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 da. but now we know. Yeah, stop. Any, I hate that yes. phrase. Anytime a scientist says, now we know, like, hey, listen, moron. Hey, up here, okay? Did you know the same scientist were saying that 100 years ago? Well, just in the 1970s, Leonard mm-hmm. Nimoy did a whole documentary on we know that climate change is real and we are approaching a new ice age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And within 20 or 30 years, Glaciers will start coming yeah. down through now. And we just, know. We yeah, know that this. Phrase, that yeah. phrase. Well, we used to think this. But now but we know. now we know. You don't know anything. I hate Stop. that phrase. Yeah. That's in a, in, a, in, a, in a world in which it's, 
basically almost impossible to get very many concrete answers. You should not be saying the phrase, now we know. Right. You can say, now we think. Yeah. You can say, we used to think this, and now we have strong evidence that makes us believe X. Right. Yeah. Based on A, B, and C, we now think this. Absolutely. Yeah. And there were some things that he said that I thought, you know, these are really legitimate things. And if I, I feel like if he'd have just gone into it with a different tone... And if he had gone into it and, and from, from minute one, so Graham wanted him to say, like Graham's thing was like, I just want, I just want you to admit that there's a possibility right. that you're wrong. Right. He, there's no reason why he shouldn't say that. Well, to me, it goes, th- this is why I love this topic, mm-hmm. because it's across all subject, uh, subject matter. So like for someone to say, we know for sure there is no Bigfoot. Yeah. Or we know for sure Loch Ness Monster is not real. Mm-hmm. We know for sure there is no God. We know for sure that there was no previous civilization. Mm-hmm. You don't know You don't know you don't, Jack. You don't know. You don't know nothing. Yeah. Mathematicians know some things. We know two plus two is four, right? There's some things that we can know. But when you're talking about these kind of things, you, you, you don't can't know. say that phrase. So if he had just come in with a humble attitude and, and said, listen, I have spent my whole world... My whole life I have spent dedicated to this field of archaeology. It matters as much to me as anything matters to anybody. It's part of my family. It's part of my DNA. It's who I am, you know? And I feel very strongly about this, and I have lots of reasons why I don't think Graham's evidence is very compelling. Right. But, sure, there's lots of stuff that I don't know, and maybe it is possible. Maybe I could be wrong, and I love to learn that I'm wrong, because if I'm wrong... And I want to learn the truth. Yeah. And I, then I know if he'd have done that, it would have deflated Graham's Graham and Graham knew that he was not willing to do this. Yeah. Now I didn't love Graham either because I, I felt like there were lots of times where he was, he, he was, he was, he was skirting around issues that I thought were actually important, you know? Um, and I felt, I felt like the stuff that Joe brought up was legitimate and I don't think he was completely willing to, uh, to, to bend as much either, but he admitted at the end of the episode that part of his strong, I don't know, um, way that he was coming out of it was just a response to all these people on the other side calling him a white supremacist. Right. Because that's like, well, okay, you just ended my career, guy. Right. Right? Like, if people actually believe that. Yeah. You know? So, anyway, it was really fascinating. It was very interesting. Um, I don't, like I said, have a horse and I actually tend to disagree with both of them um, like or I don't feel the need to agree with either of them how maybe that's yeah. a better way to say it I, I do think that like in general because I've watched all of this stuff, yeah and Graham Hancock mm-hmm. and everything I do think Graham Hancock is correct I think that civilization has gone on post flood and there was a civilization pre flood mm-hmm. um, as far as the timing and the dates and all that stuff I think they have that wrong mm-hmm. but that's okay I sure. mean everybody has stuff that they believe that is not accurate. There's a ton of stuff that we don't know. Yeah. And if and history is rewritten so many times. Yeah. I mean, so many times. Yeah. And so what we believe about, mm-hmm. you know, pick a historical figure. Mm-hmm. There's stuff about that person that we believe that is not true. Yeah. It just is. And if anything, this Flint Dibble guy, he should love the fact that Graham uh, Hancock is bringing light to his field yeah. He's bringing attention to it because, dude, you're not making documentaries that millions of people are watching. Right. So he's jealous because he doesn't have a Netflix he, doc. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he was just very dismissive. The laughing was just like, they'd yeah. ask him a question. He's like, I don't know, man. That's not my feel. I, I don't know. It's just, it was, he was just extremely. Well, what was killing me, the one part that kills me is they were showing the underground. So I didn't watch it. Okay. So. Well, they were showing this underground water feature off the coast of Japan. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's right angles and 90 degrees and plateaus. Looks man-made. I mean, 100% it's yeah. man-made. I don't doubt that for a second. Yeah. Right? And yeah. they have above ground versions of this in other places. Yeah. They look identical. Yeah. And so they're showing this Dibble guy and he's like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. just, you don't know what this. So I've seen a lot of strange things in nature. Yeah. Like, yeah, but but this is not that. Mm-hmm. 
And that's where Joe Rogan is like, but could you imagine a scenario in which this might be that? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, it's not that. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? No, it's not that. It's probably that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Well, the problem is it goes against his narrative, right? Right. Well, it's a confirmational bias. People want to believe Mm -hmm. what they already believe. Yeah. And so they're seeking out information to Mm -hmm. uh, double down on their current belief. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's my uh, exhaustive breakdown of the Joe Rogan podcast. And once again, you care nothing about archaeology. Well, no. It was just an interesting conversation. It was. Yeah. While you guys have been talking about this, I've yeah. been going through Dent Flibble's... Fli- uh, <laughs> Flibble. Dent Flibble. Uh-huh. <laughs> his, his ex profile. Yeah. He is a douche. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, this guy is insufferable. Every single post... As an archaeologist, as a serious archaeologist, not a pseudo-archaeologist. That's how I imagine he sounds. Well, so here's the other problem with the both of them is uh, Graham has a great voice. He's got this accent. It's just like, I want to listen to this guy talk. The moment Flint starts talking, he sounds like a chipmunk, and he's annoying. Yeah. Well, Which is not his fault that his voice is the way that it I'd is. I'd put him but. in a munchkin category. Oh, okay, no, that's better. Yeah, yeah he's part of the lollipop <laughs> guild, for sure. Yes. Uh, Follow the yellow So road. you feel like his ex-profile confirms <laughs> the things that I'm saying. Yes. Like, he is mm-hmm. so, he's terrible. And, like, uh, I hate everything about him. <laughs> I do. I really do. Yeah. Can we call this podcast We Hate Flint Dibble? I don't know hate. Oh no! Go through his ex profile a little bit further. You'll you'll learn. I, I make it. it a policy not to hate a person. So, but I don't mind the. I came up with this on purpose. Flint Dibble is a race baiting pseudo intellectual weenie. Uh, yeah, that checks out. That's not so bad. Yeah, well, you it's know? accurate. Too. I think he's all of those things. <laughs> I think he wants to listen. Pseudo intellectual. That might not be a hundred percent true because he obviously has spent. He's read some books. He's read some books. He's been to some <laughs> schools and some degrees. When he was like super getting excited about agriculture, yeah. and he's like, Joe, what do you think? Why do you think it's like that, Joe? And I'm like, Joe does not like you doing this. No. Because Joe's you like, tell, I don't know. Joe's like, man, just, just tell, tell me. me. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not one of your 18 year old students that's right. looking up to you like you're Indiana Jones. Like, right. just tell me. You right. Know? It was, he, he, he had the tone completely wrong. Yep. Um, they'd have been better to like, find somebody in their community that could debate better because he's a bad debater. I'm well, just, yeah, I'm just making myself looking, mad. Yeah, stop looking at his profile. All right, so so we can move on from that. Um, you know, if you're listening, Joe, <laughs> we'd love to have you on or be on. Flint Dibble, you can just, you know. If, if yeah. Flint sent us a message on Twitter and said, hey guys, listen to the show. I want to come. I want to come on and make my case. <laughs> Would you? No. Sure. No. no. <laughs> sure. I'd love no, to. I. I. No. <laughs> There's no way he would because of everything we just said and everything we're about ready to say. I would talk to oh, him. Oh, it would be you wouldn't. and okay. him in a room alone because none of the rest of us would want to be no, here. No, no, no. So like we would no, just. I don't think he would last long because he we would, would. He would walk out. We'd be on a mission yeah. to annoy him. Yeah. Like and my, we would win. Yes. <laughs> he would love some of our racial jokes. Yeah. Every other tweet on here is about everyone's racist because He's race baiting. It's uh, I mean to be like ancient civilizations are racist and they promote white supremacy. What a ridiculous thing to say. Yeah. I mean, are there racists that believe in ancient whatever? Yeah, there probably are. There are also probably racists that don't. I mean, there are racists that like Ohio State yeah, football. Gosh. Does that mean I'm supposed to be like, well, I can never root for Ohio State again because okay. there's racists. Do this. Like them. Define racist. Okay, this is good. This is good. Define racist. Hmm. Be- because I would argue mm-hmm. that everybody is a little bit racist. The assumption that another person is of lesser quality, either physically, mentally, something, um, solely based upon their skin color slash nationality. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. That would be my definition of racism. That some people, that you think that you're better than other people. Based. Purely based upon ethnicity. Based on ethnicity. Now, like. Now, would you say. Yeah. mm -hmm. Because I think that black people are superior to white people on the basketball court. Yeah, that's not a thought. I mean, that's not an opinion. That's fact, right? That's fact. But is that racist? Yeah, so Flint Dibble would say that's racist, probably. But that's not racist. But it's not racist. 
Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying is like yeah. every like I don't know. Does it make me racist that I tend to root for white basketball players? Maybe. Does it make a black guy racist if he's rooting for a black NHL player? Yes. You think so? <laughs> no, because I don't think it does, and I don't think anybody would think it does. But if for me saying, oh, yeah, I want Luka Doncic to you know, be the yeah, greatest, yeah. or I, Larry Bird's my favorite basketball player, it's like, of course I associate with him. Right. And of course, right, right, a right. black kid who liked hockey, for whatever reason yeah. that could be, you know, would associate with the black hockey but, player. But you can make and there's the, nothing wrong with no, that. No, I agree with you, but that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. You can make the argument. The only reason why you like that person is their skin color. That's mm-hmm. it. Now, you could argue that the pros and cons of that. Yeah. I think that I, I don't have a problem but with that. But that doesn't, I, it's not that I, because th- in my definition of racism, it's, it's not like I think I'm better because I'm white. It's like I actually just think it's cool that a white guy is good at basketball because he's like an underdog. Yeah, essentially, because you know? the black people are better. Generally, at, at in basketball. In basketball, yeah, they are better. Yeah, and white people generally are better at like. Well, I would say cross country skiing, but like I don't know how many black people are getting into that sport. It's a pretty <laughs> Nordic sport, but I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. Indian people are generally better at chess. Russian yeah. people are yeah. also better at chess. Does that, yeah. You know, whatever. It just is what it is. Yeah, Donald Trump, he's playing 4D chess right now. 4D chess? Is yeah. that is that real? It's a politics. Okay. Like he's, he's know, 8D. Some people say 8D He's chess. playing chess and everyone else is playing checkers. <laughs> and Joe Biden's playing tiddlywinks. <laughs> um, so anyway, so there it is. Um, you know, he also called him misogynistic. Is this misogynistic, Jason? Do you know what misogynistic means? Um, you are misogynistic, but I, am, I don't know that you know what it is. I would. I think it's something like sexist. Is that correct? I think the inference is it's it's a specific sexism from a, a man toward women. You assume that men in general are better than women. Uh, yes. Yeah. At most things. You know what? I I really I honestly I don't I want to disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not all things. And case by case scenario, um, one girl could be better at another guy at something. Sure, a single female could be better than a single male at basketball. Well, who's but this? if you lined up every man against every woman, or the top one hundred men against the top hundred women, clean their clock, it wouldn't yeah. even be close. Right. So that's the better comparison: is the top hundred in a, any given thing, men, men versus women. The men are better. So here's the problem: nobody wants to talk about this, Jason. Like a lot of people can admit that men are stronger, faster. They are. You would be an idiot. You would be an absolute idiot to say that men are not stronger, faster. They are. Right? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Across the board. Across the board. Is there a woman that's stronger than me, faster than me? Yeah. Most are. But that's... (laughs) But but I'm not a good representative of what a man should be. You're not peak physical... I'm I'm a shell of a man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but if you were to race a shell of a woman, mm-hmm. that's the only kind I would race. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really concerned about how many fat women are going to beat me in this half marathon. I, I mean, I know that. a lot of women are going to beat me. I was just thinking that. I don't have a problem with that. It's the fat women. that <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones that I'm concerned about. You know what I mean? Anybody I, larger than you. I don't have a problem. There will be people larger than me that beat me. And I have a problem with that. When is this? It is it is nine days from today. Oh, my the, the half marathon. Anyway, nobody wants to talk about this, okay? But it's the truth, Jason. There has never and probably will never be a women's chess champion. I don't believe that. They're not like in the top 100, man. I, I just don't believe it. You think you just have seen the Netflix movie. That's what Queen's Gambit. Yeah, yeah. That's what she was you're really being, good. She was great. <laughs> she could do it like on the ceiling. It's a fiction. She'd, she'd lay down a bed and watch no, it. I saw the movie. Yeah, it was really good. It's fiction. What? The it's women, ba- but it's based on a true story. Women don't beat guys in chess. Not and it's that because they're not playing. Like, so what is that? Logic. You think men are more logical? Yeah. You think that's what it is? Yeah. Women are more emotional. Across the board. Yeah. So what does that emotion make them better at? Empathy, sympathy, loving on people. Okay. Do you think women are better artists than men? Because I feel like if you took... Oh, I, th- I think it depends on the artistry, on the, on the 
So like, what are they creating? Like arts and crafts, women are better at, but men are better yeah. at like painting and things that matter. Construction paper and like rounded scissors, <laughs> <laughs> like they're really good at that. <laughs> oh, he's this guy. Um, yeah, we just ruined Jesse's night by introducing him oh. to Flint. Devo- you got to listen to the episode. Did no. you follow him? No, you should follow him you and just follow. troll him. See I, how fast you can get deleted from him. Wow. How fast yeah. he can block. Oh, you. I would go for one tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I would just rip him. Okay, we'll yeah. tag him when we, we should tag him in this yeah. episode. I'd love to have him. What's on. his name again? Flint Dibble. Flint Dibble. Just, come on. If show. he does come on, come on, I am calling him Dent Flibble the whole episode. <laughs> <Flibble>. <laughs> Maybe I will come, and that's the only reason for it. <laughs> So uh, Dent Flibble. <laughs> <laughs> Dent Flibble. That's pretty good. <laughs> so you say your dad was an archaeologist? <laughs> what, like Indiana Jones? Like, oh, he has the whole thing in here about I Indiana know. Jones and what be, he wants yeah. to see in the next, in the new movie. Okay. All right, guy. More anti-racism. So anyway, I'm not trying to, I, we are, we are on the record as a show. We're very pro-woman. I'm, okay. I'm definitely pro-woman. I You're, might be more pro-woman than pro-man. Here's, yeah, I'm definite. I prefer women over men. Yeah. A hundred percent. For almost everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. This room pref- is seventy five percent. Something's pro def- women. Something's definitely. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some things that's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things I won't even consider. <laughs> I won't even <laughs> honestly. <laughs> you know. But here's we'll we'll let the listener decide what those things are. It's up to you. We don't have to let dig your into it. imagination wander, but it's not hard to figure out. <laughs> um uh, you know, God made the man, but he formed the woman. I heard a preacher say that one time. His name is Billy Joe Watts. Uh, anyway. Um, I remember that. <laughs> would you have Billy on the show? Yeah. He wouldn't come. No. So um, anyway, uh, along the misogynistic route, I'm getting back into sports. I took a long uh, break, but yeah. I'm kind of getting back into it. Okay. I watched a lot of the Masters. Okay. Uh, I've been watching baseball. Okay. Basketball. Uh-huh. I don't care for the women commentators no oh, they're terrible now it's like why did you decide that we need a woman like okay so i'm watching the masters and they've got these four ex-golfers or whatever they're breaking it down talking yeah. about it and they have a win up there now could that woman absolutely smoke me in golf yeah absolutely i could spend the next 10 years trying to be the best golfer i could and i couldn't beat her does she know way more about golf than I do? Could she teach me a lot about golf? Absolutely. All of those things are true, okay? But there's, although I'm very pro-woman, yeah. there is something about, like, sometimes you just want to be with the guys, mm. and you just don't want a chick around. Just bros being bros. Just broing out, man, yeah. you know? And I'm like, when I watch sports, it's like a guy thing, and I don't, it's like you put... They put um, in in the uh, NCAA basketball tournament. They put this uh, female basketball player. I forget her name. Shanique was something or other. I don't know. And they they put her in there. Is that racist? Yeah. Okay. No, it's not. I liked it, but I think her name might be Shaniqua. Yeah, that's not racist. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But you know, it's like she's in there. Could she beat me in basketball? Yeah. Is she no. know more about basketball than I do? Yeah. All of those things, of course. But it's like I just don't want to. I just want guys talking and goofing around and stuff yeah you know it's like all of a sudden she enters it and everybody's like deferential to her they're always you know it's just it completely ruins the vibe it's like when you got that guy in your group of friends and he brings his girlfriend to the movie you're like guy what's the deal like we are not yeah no like now she's here we can't be like idiots anymore we gotta like be good because she's here we can't fart we like it's not cool. Talk about farting. And by the way, <laughs> I would assume that women want the same thing, and I now, have no problem with that. Tell me this: NFL Monday Night. Where do you fall on Melissa Stark? Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sideline reporter. Which one is she? I Just the one of the blondes. She's um. She's I, been around for a while. I don't remember her. Yeah. I. You know what? Or Aaron, I got a, Aaron Andrews. I got a weird thing. Yeah, Aaron Andrews. I got a. Somehow it feels like they can be sideline reporters. Yeah. You know, but I don't want them the in main the commentator. No. I don't want them in the booth and I don't want them at the halftime show either. No. I don't want them in either one of those spots. No, but sideline reporter, they sideline ask the reporter. coach two questions right before halftime. Yeah. 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 Ask the, the center. <laughs> I like, always like that. That's always like a good shot. She's like, you know, when she's not, you just see the microphone. Yeah. You know, she's not <laughs> even in the shot. She's talking to Wimby. Two questions. How do you want your sandwich made after <laughs> this game? And where do you want your laundry put? 
<laughs> Once again, very pro woman as a show. <laughs> Super right, pro. We we got to get to the Netflix suggestion I, of the week. Uh, we are running out man, of time. I stuff. And you I talked got, about Graham Hancock a lot. I knew we would. I had a lot of thoughts. Flint, if you're listening to the show, we're then I I feel like I could coach him. Yeah. If he's going to go back on on uh, I, I, on uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. I'd like to coach him. I'd coach him too. I could give him some really good tips that I think would help. I could coach him to go to the top one of the mountains. I'd probably start with, start with testosterone boosters. That's like yeah. the first thing I probably tell him to do. Yeah, it's like you gotta prove that you're he him. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse, I wish he would stop doing that. But proving that you're a he him. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I look over and like, oh gosh, Jesse, yeah, I know. <laughs> Why do you have your pants down? <laughs> that you talking about? <laughs> so, you know, that's right. one of the knocks against Stephen Crowder. Is everybody in the office has seen his? Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Apparently, he just flashes everybody. <laughs> that's not cool. Now I haven't. No, I don't know that firsthand. No, but if I'm that's checking. true, it's we're a, we're anti that. It checks out, right? With Stephen Crowder. Like yeah, I don't want nothing to do. Day Crowder one guy. orientation. He's like, all right, we got one more thing to take care of. <laughs> I don't like that guy. I don't either. I didn't like him when everybody liked him. And I was like, mm, I'm not so sure about this guy. But now that, you know, his dirty laundry is out, it's like, yeah, I was right about this guy. Yeah. And I'm out on I'm out on a lot of people that I used to be in on. I'm out on Michael Knowles. Really? I'm out What's on wrong with Michael Knowles? Smarmy. I'm I'm, I'm what? Catholic too. I'm out, <laughs> I'm out on uh, the ben other Shapiro? guys. I'm, I'm out on Ben Shapiro. Wow. I'm out on Jeremy. What's his face? Jeremy. Byrne. I'm out on the what is a woman guy. I'm out Matt on Walsh? Andrew Clavin. What? I'm out on all of what them. What about Glenn Beck? Listen, I've been out on him for a while. <laughs> Who are you in on? <laughs> Honestly, uh, Jordan Peterson. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. What's your Netflix suggestion of the week? My Netflix suggestion. Oh, so this I gave this suggestion to friend of the show. He listens. He might have a chance to go back and catch up on a lot of episodes mm. because he recently fell off a roof and broke his back. Mm. Three or four vertebrae. And um, it's Jason, uh, Jess's husband. Oh, man. Yeah. So he's. Uh, this just happened two or three days ago. So mm. Really? Um, yeah. Jeez. So he's they're at home. I'm gonna go visit them this weekend. But anyways, he's he's in bed for a while. Fell off and, a uh, roof. Fell off a roof. He was on a ladder doing something, and the ladder mm. swung out from underneath him. He was hanging on the gutter. Couldn't hold Chevy on. Chevy Chase style. Chevy Chase style. So, I don't want to make light of it, but no. I mean, well, he's okay. I mean, he's got a long mm. road ahead of him. But anyways, um, I gave him this suggestion, and uh, I went back and started watching him, and it's fantastic. I knew he would like it. Man Tracker. Have you seen this? I have no idea what this is. Okay, so Man Tracker was produced, um, I mean, it's 20, 25 years old. Might <sighs> be slightly older. Um, it's on YouTube. Um, it was on the Science like Discovery Network for a long time. Sure. Uh, but full episodes are available on YouTube. And basically, there's a guy on horseback who tracks down two contestants. Um, they're given a map, a starting point, an ending point. They have like 35 miles to go. And they have like 48 hours to get there. And he starts like five miles away. Mm -hmm. They shoot a flare off mm. and he starts tracking them. I like this. And so he's got to find where the starting point was. Man so, is the most exciting game. Yeah. And so he's got like a rope and he ropes them and, he's, yeah. <laughs> and then he drags them through the desert. Yeah, he's like, I got you. You're done. <laughs> that's like, awesome. I've caught you. Or I could get off on a horse and just like. Do people ever get away from him? Occasionally. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. And you so. Think you could? Um. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've watched a lot of this, yeah, and you, you should some, too. You it, it's really great. Where, where is it? It's on YouTube. YouTube. It's Man called Tracker. Man Tracker. It's, I, it's, I'm excited it's about It's really this. good. And so like one of the things he talks about is like he'll look at a dirt path, and he'll see, oh, do you see where um, the dirt is kicked this direction? Like mm. you see a shoe print, maybe not well-defined, but then there's loose dirt behind it. Mm. He's like, they're going that direction because mm. you can see the loose dirt. Or there was a big mud puddle. And you can see on the left side, the leaves were pushed down. On the right side, the leaves are up. Mm. He's like, they went around this puddle, so he didn't mm. leave. And he's like, do you see these leaves? And he'll mm. he'll show you how he's tracking them. Wow. It's really good. Mm. Um, and he catches them a majority of the time. Or they time out. Does he have Native American blood? I don't know. Because I feel like they're really good at that. He usually has a guide with him that is familiar with the local layout. Mm. So, like, he did one in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, he's usually in Canada, okay. um, Rocky Mountains, sure. that area. Sure. Um, 
really good. It's called Man Tracker, available on YouTube. Um, 45 minutes each. It's an easy watch. Man Tracker. Man Tracker. Man Tracker on yeah. YouTube. All right. My Netflix suggestion of the week is found on HBO's streaming service, which I guess HBO is, Max. I guess it's called, it was HBO Max, but now they've just dropped the HBO and it's just Max. Hmm. I don't like that. So I saw somebody tweeted, they're like, HBO Max just dropped HBO and now they are only Max. You're up next, Peacock. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I knew you would That's like good. that. That's that's your. Anyway, it's it's found on Max or HBO, and it is a mini series. I've seen it. I watched it a long time ago, and I'm rewatching it. It is John Adams starring Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. No. It's, no, you haven't. It's very good. I mean, I really, really like it. I'm also listening currently to a biography of Thomas Jefferson. So like both of these things are like happening at once in my mm-hmm. brain. And um, it's it's excellent. It's very good. I'm a huge Paul Giamatti fan. He was the right choice for this. Unlike Michael Douglas for Ben Franklin. Give me a break. I, I talked about this, yeah. didn't I? Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about that. But it's called John Adams. It's on HBO. It's a miniseries. I think it's like six episodes. Each one's like an hour and a half or something each. Um, I think Tom Hanks produced it. It's really, really good. It's it's like 20 years old, but it's excellent. I encourage everyone to watch it. Do you think it's possible for someone with two eyes to be able to look at two pieces of paper and read them at the same time? Like mm-hmm. left eye on this paper, right eye on this paper? I don't know, man. That's not my area of expertise. That was a Flint Dibble impression, if you didn't know. Death level. Isn't that what he would say? Yeah. <laughs> you know, back when my dad studied this, 72 years ago. My dad put ago. together these models, and honestly, that is a dead-on impression. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, I you watching say anything? That it's no. Not. I'm still on suits. I'm just, I'm out of sorts today now. That's fine. I'm sorry. You should listen to this uh, episode of Joe Rogan. It'll make you might throw mad. my phone through the window. That's I'm curious what you would think. Four and a half hours. <sighs> um, it's a long can, one. I don't want to upset anybody yeah. who listens to the show. But you're going to give it a good shot. But could they really be essential oils if people are living without them? <laughs> how essential are these oils honestly yeah i feel like the branding well is, they did an excellent job with the branding yeah because I mean, people they feel, make like you feel like listen this is essential but i'm yeah. like but if there's people living without these oils then how essential can could it be? they be essential yeah maybe we call them maybe we need to just call them important oils mm. you know recommended oils Really good idea oils. Super healthy oils. <laughs> Fairly okay oils. You could call them live longer oils if you yeah. want. You, there's a lot of things you can call Life them. Life enhancement oils. I'm totally fine with that. Spend a bunch of money oils. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Pyramid scheme oils. If you want to call it that. I wouldn't. Other people have. But I feel like essential oil? Mm. You know, I just don't think... Oh, you just upset Jess. Uh, well, I, you know, and I started this by saying I don't want to upset anybody. Her husband's in bed with a broken back and you're making fun of her. Well, if the... Mm. Never mind. I almost said the same thing, but we both... We both <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. You caught yourself at the door. <laughs> you went a little further than I did. Yeah. You know, but uh, the thought I did stop me. myself. You've, and that's... You're, you're and growing. That's good. Listen, I, that's, I... Listen, that's why I started... I said I don't want to offend anybody. And I'm not trying to offend Jess. But... But... I just, <laughs> if I, I got to be honest. If they, I'm not, they can't be that essential. If people how are essential them, could they be? They can't be. That's all. Would you guys, you, how much time do we have? We got four minutes. Okay. You guys want to talk about less. Uh, the Caitlin Clark chick? Yeah, we can talk we about her. Yeah, so and it goes back to a little bit what you were saying earlier. So she's white. She's white. Mm-hmm. She's very good at basketball. She is good at basketball. For a woman. She could beat you. She could beat me, but I am fairly convinced that I could be 80% of the best post players that are women. Well, you could back today. them down and post them up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think so. Yeah. You would enjoy that. They would enjoy that. <laughs> nobody, but, would. Nobody, nobody, nobody would enjoy that. Nobody it. would enjoy that. But there's all He's this like, I get a little sweaty. <laughs> I'm going to go skins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I do that at the Y sometimes. I get yeah, all, I all oiled Listen. up, and I'm like, hey. I call skins like no. Yeah, I call this Jesse's essential oil. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see that people are making a big fuss because her her 
rookie contract in the WNBA. I think it only amounts like 300, to like 300 000. something thousand. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they're like, but look at Victor Wimbanyamas, who's like the the new guy in the NBA that's yeah. incredible. And it's like someone did a breakdown of how much the WNBA brings in per year. And they're like, yeah. They lose like, money. They She's lose actually money. overpaid. Yeah. Yeah. No, the WNBA loses money. The NBA funds um, them. Yeah. The NBA mm-hmm. supplements and, their. Mm-hmm. And. So uh, I saw this was great. There were like, people were like, if you're so worried about the pay discrepancy between the WNBA players and the NBA players, subscribe to the WNBA plus, you know, whatever sure. subscription for $37. And if you hesitated, that's why they don't get paid that much. Also, didn't, uh, who, who has that three on three basketball league that he Oh, the yeah. big three ice cube ice cube offered her $5 million. Dang. To play in his league, should have taken it. Should have taken Take it. it. Yeah. But like, I'm convinced. It's and he's smart sh- because he knows she's a big. Yeah. You know the final It'd four tickets. It'd be a draw. It, it would be a draw. People want to see it. I mean, she couldn't play against these guys like seriously, and that's why if she's smart, she won't take it because it's going to make her look not nearly as mm. good as she, she's cash great. Out. Take the five. Yeah, we'll and take cash. Yeah, you're out. not going to make that much money in women's basketball. No, in her whole career, yeah, she won't make. She's that much. great, and she is. Yeah. she's ridiculous. I, I watched some of the games, mm-hmm. and I've never watched women's sports, and I never will again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, I was at beat ups one like, time, and I was like, "Hi, the Caitlin Clark okay, game is on of this." Of all the women's sports, what's the one sport that you would not mind watching? <laughs> Jesse, be careful. No, <laughs> no, I know, I know the answer. I mean. Volleyball. Yeah, beach volleyball. Beach volleyball. Yeah, that's the answer. Swimming. Tennis, maybe? Golf? Tennis is good. Swimming. <laughs> They're underwater, Jesse. I mean, yeah. like, you know what I mean? You just see a wet a, No, he, he likes Riley the uh, Gaines. synchronized swimming. Riley all... Gaines is pretty is pretty attractive. The one that lost to the dude. Leah Thomas? Well, didn't lose to the dude. I they had the like, exact same time. Yeah. I feel like of all the women's sports, and I don't watch any, <laughs> but if I, the one that would be... Probably the most entertaining is maybe golf because yeah. it's not like obviously the women can't hit it as far as the men, but when you're watching on TV, you can't quite tell like yeah. that. So maybe golf. Just I, I sometimes will watch women's disc golf because it's you on at the same, mm-hmm. and it's it's like like some of these girls like I could probably do fairly well against them, mm-hmm. but going back to the commentary, you play shirts and skins and uh, frisbee <laughs> golf too. You're not supposed to. <laughs> But I'm a rule breaker. Uh-huh. So is this uh all right. <laughs> That's the first question I ask any time I walk into a room. Is you this like shirts? a shirts and skin situation? <laughs> any room. <laughs> any room. I walk in for dinner. Yeah. When you went to the uh Marion Popcorn Festival uh <laughs> meeting, the chair meeting or whatever, you're like, Whose shirts, whose skins? Because I'm I'm calling skins. I'm calling skins. All right. That's a show, Jason. That's a show. I, I hope that people weren't too annoyed by the breakdown of Flint Lockwood. I, I was. Whatever his name is. Uh, but it is what it is. Yeah, All right. This is Dan signing off for Jason, reminding you to always keep your stick on the ice and never wear the blue sweats. Sit, but sit. Good job. I have spoken. And people, tell me if you like me over here better. Because if you do, we'll make it work. No, we're not. Gonna okay. Good, good night, Lower Patch kids. And especially you, Big Papa King mm. on the X. He posted a picture of the Lower Road sign. So he he's trying to track us down. But we appreciate it. Yeah. We'd like to maybe meet you someday. I don't know. Well, maybe we have. But listen, if you're <laughs> if you're pro Dent Flibble, you can probably stop watching. Mm-hmm. Dent Flibble sucks. Can I change my sign off to Jeez. I hate you, Dent Flibble? <laughs> <laughs> it's your sign off. Alright. <laughs> That's the worst. Oh, he's so bad. <laughs> <laughs>